Some machines have a very short commercial life. Some machines have a very long one. The Sega Master System may be unique in that it had both. Two years after it was released in the UK, Japan had already given up on it, but it was still getting Sega licensed boxed releases a decade later in Brazil. History's Greatest Console has six official Sonic the Hedgehog Universe games. Japan never saw any of them. The US just won. But that's just the commercial life. You can still buy new release Master System cartridges. And a lot of those began life in the now long established SMS Power Coding Competition. The 2023 edition closed for entries back on the 27th, giving us seven entirely new Master System games on which you can vote. An occasion this auspicious demands the finest of hardware setups. And so, after a week's careful consideration, here's my 7 to 1. Bear in mind here, these are all produced to a deadline and will likely be various forms of unfinished. Artful. A lot of competition games are, understandably, simple. There's instructions for almost every game in this list, but you probably don't need to actually read any of them to understand how to play them. Artful's manual is, by disc size, larger than, well it's larger than Artful is. It has sections called things like, explanation of the graphical user interface in the game. It at one stage uses the phrase, for more technical details, see the Z80 assembler source code. Its controls are complex enough that it benefits from having two control pads plugged in. For one player. You can't play it one player though. The basic premise is, either starting with a source image or from scratch, the game gives player 1 something to draw, and then player 2 will have to guess what the prompt was. This is no Mario Paint or Art Attack though, because the images have to be drawn using the bespoke Megadraw programming language. If you're of a certain age, you'll remember Logo, the thing with the turtle. If not, the commands are broadly simple. Pen up, pen down, up, down, left, right, and some simple implementations of drawing circles and doing loops. Each program may have up to 69 commands. Nice. A word of warning, if you're using original hardware, pop into the forums and get at least version 1.1, because otherwise it looks like this. On the updated version, the graphics are fine, but nothing is helping that music, which sounds like a harmonica having a heart attack. Playing it though broadly works well enough. It's given me a picture of a moon and the prompt I have to get across is over the moon, which I can accomplish by trying to draw an arrow. I'll level with you here. What I was actually going to do was hilariously draw a penis instead. However, the game ruined that by being really awkward in terms of how you select the commands and add them. It doesn't respond especially quickly and weirdly categorizes some. Also, I couldn't delete a single command. It's the whole program or nothing. There's also a problem with the game mechanic itself. You score by guessing what the other player drew, but you're playing against them, so they have no incentive to do well. I'm not sure how you solve that without a third player, admittedly. There's also the issue that there's only enough images to play three unique games before they'll repeat. The creator points out correctly this is a time issue. The game supports, and there is space, for 512 images on the cart. I sound down on this and I don't want to be. A little more user friendly, some sort of game mechanic that incentivizes you actually doing the job well, and that very ill harmonica being removed to a place of safety, and this is an incredible idea with a huge amount of work gone into it. Truth be told, breaking the bespoke Megadraw language out into just a programming package without the game attachment would actually be a really cool thing for kids just starting out with the idea of programming, and there would then be room to make the interface better. So this doesn't quite know what it wants to be, and in other years it might have got away with that. But you're about to find out this is an incredible one, and for me, marking on how much fun I'm having, Artful, while incredibly admirable and promising, is going to come in 7th for now. I really hope we get that straight programming cart though. Monaco Master A car game, this is looking up early doors. 
Monaco Master is explicitly an update of the game the creator Louis the Sega Nerd made years ago that was apparently a takeoff of LCD racing games. And to be fair, top-down Grand Prix games aren't that common on the Sega 8 bits. Unfortunately, the one I can think of is by Sega. And called Monaco Grand Prix, not to be confused with Super Monaco Grand Prix. It did get an SG-1000 release, and Louis admits that the gameplay in this is more akin to one of those early titles than something especially well suited to the Master System. He's not wrong. Monaco Master is the definition of simple. There are five lanes, there are one use, don't hit the cars, hitting the cars is bad. Please continue. And as one of these games, it's as simple as you might expect. That said, it plays well and looks very nice indeed. Those are some huge car sprites, and the thing moves at a very credible pace. Switching from the kind of turn-based movement of the old LCD games to smooth does have its drawbacks though. Fairly frequently I'd tried to swerve between two cars and clip the front of one I thought I'd passed, because a few pixels of it were on screen. Something to cope with, but equally a problem its ancestors never had. It does at least have a breadth of variety. The game has a couple of difficulty levels affecting the number of cars that are going to be getting in your way, and there's three game types which change the formations of what you're going to encounter, with Type 1 being more of a traditional layout, Type 2 having teammates working together, and Type 3 being the little known sport of synchronised driving. It all helps, but obviously with just the single track and very mildly warmed over game modes, we're not looking at a deep experience here. Louis knows his stuff though. About five of us even remember Leighton House. The excellent music is named after some quite esoteric racing concepts, and the game even supports the SMS FM chip. Unfortunately, my Master System does not. This is placing here because it's a simple, slight game in what is already a standout year for this competition. But if this truly is the worst single player experience we're going to see, then it really doesn't deserve that position at all. Shooter jump. You have to love it in these competitions when someone tries something new or uses underutilised hardware. Shooter jump is a puzzle game using the light gun, the least obvious combination since that time Tesco thought it was a good idea to make candy cane flavoured crisps. This does though present us with a problem, because in order to play it, I need a light gun. Easy. And a CRT. Also easy. Until you want to show the internet what you're doing on it. I apologise for the quality of some of the following footage, especially the bits where you can hear the cat jumping up to inspect the phone and or gun cable. Still here we are, and to explain, Shooter Gem is basically columns, but columns where you shoot gems to make them disappear in an attempt to create connections of three or more jewels which then disappear. If the resulting carnage completes more three plus in a row, they also disappear. Doing so extends the really quite restrictive timer and also gives you points. The games are short, usually under a minute, and pretty frenetic. Enough to give you eye strain after a few of them in fact. I don't know if light gun programming is something you get for free on the SMS or you have to do some interpreting of the data, but in any case it's perfect here. Any mistakes I was making were clearly my own aiming, and when I took the time to check it hit the right spot every single time which is pretty vital for a game like this. And that's about it, really. It's an even more simple game than Columns, because there's no swapping of things between Columns. Your only interaction is removing individual gems. The only added mechanic is the light gun classic reloading by shooting away from the screen, something I completely forgot during my first game. And as such, the life of this as an actual game is restricted about as much as the need for a CRT console and gun to play it properly restricts its audience. It does sometimes feel like luck whether there's an appropriate three in a row play, and the time limit means that even the need to shoot out two or three gems to make a match determines your score through no fault of your own as such. This is Joe's first Master System game, and you can tell he's made the effort to write it in assembler. He's also joined Monaco Master in utilising the FM sound chip. It's beautiful, and the music, which appears to be all his work too, is damned good. I'm very glad this exists, and it's a shame that games like this will only ever be played by a subset of the audience, because this level of imagination is to be commended. Primates. Are you old? Chances are, if you're watching, then yes.
If so, you may remember Gorillas.Bass, which was originally bundled with MS-DOS 5 and classic PC language QBASIC, where a lot of us did our first PC-based game development. If you don't, then it's basically a prototype of the genre of games that would very quickly develop into titles like Worms, and has its roots in even earlier tank-based titles. Your two characters, in this case Gorillas, stand at broadly either side of some kind of landscape and chuck explosives at each other. You hit, you get a point. And so, Primates by Will Britton, an explicit conversion of said basic game, which, pleasingly, Will has released the source code to on GitHub along with this adorable cover inlay. I am pleased how many of these entrants seem to have done at least one of these. The base, classic game, is as you'd expect. You set an angle, you set a power, and you wang a banana. Then your opponent gets a go. As you can see, it's very much a direct homage to the original, even down to the colour schemes used, although you will also be reminded of Rampage, another game with a very credible Master System port now I think about it. There's very little not to like here, the game boils down, as the original did, to iterating values of angle and power until you get a shot on, and hope the AI, or your opponent, doesn't get there first. The answer is actually not going to be the same for both of you as both wind and scenery generally demands that the pair of you take slightly different approaches to solving the problem. You can't just copy their numbers in most cases. The majority of the time you'll pick an angle that'll get over the most immediate obstacle and then just finesse the power. Which is going to make for the single and only criticism you're going to hear from me about this game. It doesn't show you the last power and angle you used. It's not a biggie, you're remembering two small numbers after all but it does seem it'd be a nice touch since you'll always be basing one shot off the last. It spoils nothing though, and if this was the entire game it would be worth having on your flash cart, especially for two player, and a very worthy entry to a competition like this. But Will's been busy. Arcade mode. There's no big differences here, again the game will run to three rounds, but now you can launch bananas at the same time. You can't do it as fast as you like, Unlike in your mum's house, there's a one banana at a time limit here, but you've got the time it takes said banana to arrive to adjust for the next shot, because your opponent is doing exactly the same. The game is even clever enough that it awarded us both a point when we shot each other at the same time. This is brilliant. The only thing that'll stop it winning a competition like this is it's also very simple, but it's less so than the game it's based on while losing nothing from it, and in two player this is always going to be immense fun. Good job Will. The Master System is a better machine for having this. Extreme Volleyball Infernal League We didn't see an entry from SMS legend Rafnet last year, but the year before that he took second and third places with SMS a sketch and the Sokoban clone SKBN, which was my personal winner of 2021. So clearly a new game from him is immediately a strong favourite for glory. Extreme Volleyball Infernal League has a hell of a plot. Every millennium, the great demon King Azadeen opens a rift to the mortal realm to overtake it. The only way to save the world is by climbing the ranks of his Extreme Volleyball Infernal League. And some of you have already got it. Mortal Realm? Tournament? Then you start the game, choose a character and the tower appears. Suddenly it's obvious. What if Mortal Kombat were instead a game about volleyball? did not see that coming. The game leans into the mechanics well, alongside the character roster and the tower, the characters taunt each other at the start of matches, and straight scoring is replaced by a fighting game style energy bar mechanic that depletes as the ball hits your side of the floor. So what of the actual game? Well you're sold immediately. There's no tricky volleyball mechanics here in favour of some bastard version of Pong on Legs. If you get in the way of the ball, it just bounces off you, and it can do so quite happily an infinite number of times without penalty before you fire it back across the net. That's overstating the control though. I've played really quite a lot of this now, and I do still lose most of my points over what could be termed as self-inflicted injuries, although the various CPU players are pleasingly fallible and also prone to a football in the groin. To help you, various power-ups drop, from what I can only assume is a little helper poo emoji, to one that gives you sticky balls shut up at the back, and the ability to slow down your opponent, which, no kidding, might actually help them. Again, much like Primates, this is saved as a long-term prospect by the addition of a two-player mode, and it's one of the perfect multiplayer experiences even over something like that. When everyone is bad at the game, 
No one is. And there's going to be an abundance of, you're going down, being immediately followed by cannoning the ball off the surprisingly solid net straight into your own face. It's not going to be my winner, because it's had the misfortune to come along in a year where there's a lot of very good, very complete games. But especially if you've got a handy player too, you need to play this. Well observed parody is not what I was expecting. The character taunts are in such a perfect, not quite English, that I genuinely don't know if that's deliberate, or just Raph working in a second language and getting lucky. Still, this is what you want from a competition entry. You won't play it forever but you'll get a good laugh out of it while you do. Little Evil Knievel Now this, as they say, is a chonky boy. With the exception of a couple of very late era Brazil titles, SMS cartridges topped out at 4 megabit, or less impressively, 512 kilobytes, about two thirds of one Amiga disc. This is 8 megabit, or a full megabyte, it's the same size as the first Mega Drive Sonic game. And here's why. If you're a veteran of this competition, you may remember a non-gaming entry from two years ago. A little demo of the SMS sound capabilities using snippets from Van Halen tracks. While technically impressive, there was nothing there to actually do. And so unsurprisingly, Steve Pro XNA placed second last, beating only a tile swapping tech demo for the Game Gear. The thing is though, these things often develop to be used in games, and here we are two years later with skateboard platformer Little Evil Knievel. Because that one megabyte is used to give it perhaps the single most impressive audio soundtrack the little PSG has ever seen. And I know he's not cheating and using the FM chip for this, because as we've already established, my Master System doesn't have one. And because on the title screen it doesn't... quite work? You don't hear it in the attract loop because the game is pretending to be an arcade machine, which often stays silent during those. But as soon as you start the game, not only is it using sampled speech and music for its interstitials as you reach continue points and the end of the level, the ongoing PSG music is top quality. Just listen to the thing. It's not even the only tune, as the game regularly mixes up the music during the 5 worlds and 10 levels it currently contains with apparent plans for expansion, although where exactly the room for that is I don't know. Predictably the music is better than the game itself, and certainly more comprehensive. Evil K is a very simple mobile style runner if it's anything, featuring just long and short jumps in a constantly scrolling level. The difficulty is done clever, making the game more difficult changes nothing except moving you further right on the screen, so you have less time to react, which is a neat if cheap way to solve that problem. There are some problems with it as a concept. Because you can only see so far ahead, whatever the difficulty, there are times where you have to make a blind decision on which size of jump to use, as the long one can see you sailing into the middle distance as the platform you were supposed to land on runs out. The general rule of thumb is, if you can see the landing point at the last minute, then you can use the short jump, but that doesn't quite seem to be a hard and fast rule. Still though, this is an experience game, and it's one of the pleasingly large number of times in this competition where we're discovering games that genuinely get more out of the machine than anything did in its commercial life. Music, as I said earlier, is often the thing that's easy to neglect in a time pressure competition entry game, and to have two FM sound chip games, and something doing this much clever in this year's competition, is great. I'm judging by how much fun the game is in this list, and Evil is not the best thing I've played this year but it might just be the cleverest, and especially if you've got a real Mazzy Sassy handy, you have got to give this a go to hear it for yourself. Where is it? Where is it by Rico59 is a puzzle game and it claims to be an original idea. I can't disagree with that, it's not one I've seen before. It's got a very puzzler magazine feel if anything. The job is, against the clock, to find the given 3x3 grid of tiles on the board. 
It's a big board and the tiles are small, which makes this quite a brave thing to ask you to try on a Master System. On this SCART equipped original spec model though, it survives just fine. Not sure I'd be wanting to play it in RF though. Already, here playing version 1.0, we're on to a winner. Commercial games have been made of less, and Where Is It has a 3 difficulty arcade mode where you need to make 10 matches within a certain time limit each, and then have challenge rounds where you get points for every match you can make in a certain time. It can be frenetic. Sometimes you spot the pattern immediately, others the timer is ticking down as you swear there is not a goddamn red square with a star in anywhere on this goddamn board and you are all goddamn liars for saying that there- oh there it is. Never mind. Again, we're getting uncommonly good sound this year. The entire soundtrack to this game is delightful. I left it on the title screen for some time just to have a listen to it, and in-game is just as good. The arcade mode difficulty levels don't just affect the timer, and I'd tell you about them, but that would really stand on what I want to say about story mode. Yes, story mode. The reason for the subtitle about the 10th island in the game's name. As you work through the 10 levels in story mode, then the game subtly increases the difficulty. First by removing some of the cartoon-like tiles, and then by removing the flat-coloured ones. I won't spoil the final level, but it certainly doesn't make things easier. This is not a game that could be played by anyone with a colour perception issue certainly, which is a shame, but it's difficult to see how this would be avoided. This is superb. Not even just as an SMS game. I started playing story mode, and I did not stop until I had finished story mode. If you have some kind of emulation handheld, then put this on it immediately, and your next train journey will disappear entirely into the void. I shouldn't be surprised. Rico 59 was responsible for last year's Do the Same, another original puzzle game I liked very much, and this is considerably better than that was. Maybe story mode could be long enough that I can't complete it on day one, maybe there's a few more things they can do with the difficulty, but this is a very, very strong entry. In fact, it's my pick for the winner, and that's a huge compliment in a year where every single one of these games is worth playing, and I dare say literally all of them would be in the top half if they were a year or two older. Genuinely, if you released a slightly expanded this in a box in 1992, I think it would have reviewed okay. If the competition itself was new to you, this year is the 19th. To find out the best, quick, friend of the channel 8BitBoy just looked at a big pile of the winners dating back nearly two decades. It's your first stop to find out what you've missed since Sega stopped paying attention to history's greatest console. That video will be on the end screen in about 20 seconds time, and you'll also find it in the description below. It is astonishing that a 38 year old console still gets this level of love. And even if you don't have access to be as extra with the hardware capture as I was, everything here is a fun time, especially the multiplayer ones. But what do you think? Is where is it your pick, or should something else have been my choice? Download them now from SMS Power. Tell me in the comments, then go vote and have your say. As it strides towards its 40th anniversary in two years time, the Master System might never have been stronger. To be this good, really does take ages.